light is a type of energy, just the same way that sound is a type of energy, there's potential energy, there's kinetic energy, this is just another form. What you should know by the time you finish this is that light is a type of energy that we can see. White light is a combination of red, blue, and green light. Each color of light has a different wavelength, and many organisms detect light with their eyes. The primary colors of light are actually red, blue, and green. Now this can be really confusing for kids because you learn in art class that the primary colors for pigments like paint and crayons and things like that are red, yellow, and blue. That's still true, but pigments, when you're in art class, you're dealing with light that's being reflected. It's hitting the paper and bouncing back to your eye. We're just talking about sources of light. So there's no bouncing happening here. We're talking about light that's coming straight from the sun to your eyes. We're talking about light bulbs, things like that. A good example of how those primary colors of light work together would be television screens and computer screens and things like that. You can definitely see this on older screens. And as our technology gets better, it's harder and harder to see it with your eye. But if you can get close enough to an older television screen, you will see that the individual teeny squares or pixels on the screen are actually made up of bands of color. There's blue, there's green, and there's red. If the television screen needs to be white, all three lights will come on at the same time. If the screen needs to just be blue, only the blue lights will come on. If a part of the screen should be purple, then the blue and the red will come on. This slide kind of illustrates this idea a little bit more. In the upper left corner you have a red light, in the upper right you have green, and across the bottom is the blue light. Now where the red and the green light overlap, you get yellow. Where the green and the blue light overlap, you get kind of a teal color. Where the red and the blue overlap, you get magenta. That's just purplish pink. And then where all three of them overlap, you that is where you get white light. There are several other places where you can see this happening at concerts, lights that shine on a stage. If you're a performer or a dancer, you can look up at the lights and if the red, green, and blue lights are on, you actually will have white light shining on the stage. The most important thing here is that white light is made by combining red, green, and blue light. And you can actually prove this whole thing to yourself if you would like. There are lots of sources of white light around us and when those sources pass through a prism, sometimes that can even be a drop of rain or a drop of oil, or the back of a CD, when the white light bounces in and out of a prism, a color, a rainbow color will come out. Red will come on the top, followed by orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and that is how you can prove that white light is composed of all colors of light. Here's a picture of a real life prism where you have the light coming in from the right, bouncing around inside the prism, and a rainbow comes out the other side. And the reason we have different colors is because each color has its own unique wavelength. Now remember, wavelength is the distance between two peaks. Red light has the longest wavelength. It's the farthest apart. It's the lowest energy. It's the slowest moving. Violet light has the shortest wavelength. It's moving quickly. It's got a lot of energy. This helps explain why red's always at the top of the rainbow and violet's always at the bottom. Because the red light is so long, it doesn't, it's not able to bend as much as the violet light. Here's a picture that shows you what I'm talking about. This is visible light's wavelengths. Now these aren't accurate, of course, because really the wavelengths are much, much smaller. But you can see red has a nice long wavelength, then orange, yellow, all the way down to violet. Violet's got waves that are very close together. This slide shows you the same rainbow across the bottom, 
but it puts some numbers to it to help you understand this idea of wavelength. There on the left side, where the purple color is, you see the number 400. That's the wavelength of purple light. Purple light has a wavelength of 400 nanometers. As you move across to the right side, red light has a wavelength of about 700 nanometers, making it much longer. The craziest part about all of this, this huge rainbow of colors that we can see, this is visible light. If you can see it, it falls somewhere in between these wavelengths of four to 700 nanometers. It fits into the teeny tiny sliver that you see at the top of the screen, the part that says we can only see energy with these wavelengths. When you move further to the right, you've got energy that's got long wavelengths, things like infrared rays. A lot of kids who play video games are pretty familiar with infrared rays because it means night vision. If you have infrared goggles, you can see at night. As, the f as you move further right, you get to radar, which is a type of sound energy, then FM radio waves, then television waves, short wave, and AM radio waves. Each of these has a longer and longer wavelength than the one before it. The longest wavelength, the AM radio, it has the lowest energy. And that actually explains why AM radio signals aren't as strong as FM radio signals. Your FM radio sound is so much better and that's because the wavelength is shorter because it has more energy. Now as you move to the left, when you move from the color purple further left, you get ultraviolet rays. These are the things that come from the sun that can cause cancer and other skin problems and that is why we wear sunscreen. Further to the left are x-rays and then gamma rays. Gamma rays, the best source of those actually comes from sun and other stars. These have the shortest wavelength. These waves are so close together. That means there's a ton of energy in gamma rays. So most organisms are going to detect light using organs on their body. We do that by using our eyes. So the picture just tucked behind the other one is an eye, and you can see the lens. That's where light can come in. And there at the back of the eye, there are special cells. There are rods and there are cones. Now you've got millions of these things in the back of each of your eye. And those cells help us see colors. The cones help see colors. And then the rods help see shades. Or some people call it black and white. So there at the picture in front of it, you can see there are cones that detect blue light, short wave cones. Middle wave cones can detect greens and yellows. Long wave cones can detect oranges and reds. And then you have rods. Now if something is like maroon, then you would use your long wave cone to see the red part of it, and then the rod would help show you that it's kind of a darker red than normal. When we talk about this in class, one of the most common questions that kids have has to do with color blindness. Now that's a human genetic trait that causes someone to not see all the colors of the rainbow. It's usually because one or two types of the cones are missing or even damaged. So instead of having the red, green, and blue cones, someone with color blindness usually just has the blue shortwave cone and their rods. And this makes it so they can really only pick up on certain colors, and colors that are red and green look the same to them. Now let's see how you did. If you understood everything from this little PowerPoint, you'll be able to answer these questions. Take a look at them, and in about a minute, the answers will pop up.